Hi, this is David Barry. I'm here with uh, Leah Barton, and we're here today to talk about the American Rescue Plan. And um, we've all heard of it. Uh, we all know its acronym ARPA, but tell us a little bit more. Uh, where did ARPA come from, and what allocation did the county receive? The American Rescue Plan Act was passed by Congress last March, and the county was very lucky to receive a direct allocation of $915 million that we can use to help accelerate recovery from the public health and economic impacts of the pandemic. Yeah, and I, I would emphasize getting that money allocated directly was just a tremendous benefit because we don't have to work through the state, we don't have to work through another federal agency. We can get it moving quite quickly um, to, to help people recover. Uh, and that's a huge amount of money, obviously, but we also have a huge amount of need. And I know Commissioner's Court has had to set some priorities of, of where to direct those funds. So tell us a little bit more about, about those priorities and how they're carrying through to the uh, to the programs we're standing up here. Commissioner's Court established four primary priorities, health, housing, jobs and education, and county operations with an emphasis on justice and safety. Commissioner's Court also approved an equity framework that underpins all of our ARPA investments to make sure that we're really investing our money in the areas that need it most and addressing some of those disparities that were really highlighted and exacerbated by the pandemic. And I, um, I actually remember the Treasury Department called out um, our administration of the program and that equity framework is a, is, a, is a model for others to follow. And it's been really interesting to me to see programs evolve as they, they go through that process. And um, uh, just taking the discipline to think twice about who we're helping and what disparities we're inheriting, I think has made the, made the programs better. And another thing that's been really satisfying is to see a team of people working together who might not work together every day. So um, I, I know recently there's been some, uh, some movement on our neighborhood nuisance project. And um, tell us a little bit more about that and, and who all is involved and how they're uh, making things happen. Neighborhood nuisance abatement is a fantastic project focusing on issues of impacting vulnerable neighborhoods, experiencing high levels of violent crime, where there might be tall weeds, a pile of trash, an abandoned pool, or some other unsafe structure that's really holding a neighborhood back. And our public health's built environment team is responsible for abating these nuisances, but they're getting ideas from citizens, from uh, the sheriff's office, from precincts, who are really highlighting those areas that are most impacting folks who are trying to live around them and uh, who really want to be living in a safe and clean neighborhood. Commissioner's Court has already approved 59 orders to abate, and public health is knocking those out as quickly as they can. And um, another thing you mentioned was the criminal court backlog. And as a result of Hurricane Harvey, and then it was very hard to hold trials during the pandemic, um, we have a lot of catch up to do as a county in terms of holding trials and moving cases through our, our justice system. So tell me a little bit uh, about our investments there and how they're coming along. Yeah, we've committed about $38 million to uh, court backlog investments, expanding court capacity with additional district attorneys, public defenders, bailiffs, and uh, other you know, court staff, expanded evidence retrieval practices like um, adding staff to go pull body camera video or uh, 911 tapes, and also, uh, particularly during the pandemic, invested in, in jury services to help expand uh, jury activities when the courts were down at NRG. Got it. Well, and I know we still have a ways to go, but I have been seeing that um, we're making th progress through the backlog. And I know we just at the last commissioner's court approved a, a new round of funding. And mm -hmm. I think um, on October 11th, there'll be another proposal for the Institute of Forensic Science. So it's really a lot of different agencies who are trying to add resources uh, to, to catch up on an important problem. And I'll tell you, for me, it's been um, it's been really enjoyable to sit on the steering committee uh, calls and hear uh, so many different county employees uh, working together from folks doing grant compliance to folks in purchasing have had a huge volume of new work to do and county attorney as well as the service departments where um, because of this money getting some opportunities to address needs that have gone addressed for a, for a really long time so uh, we've made a lot of progress we got a lot of work to do I think the deadline to have all the money committed is the end of 2024 and then we have until 2026 to exactly. finish up the programs so again, that sounds like a long time, but um, we have a lot of work to do. And uh, I'm really looking forward to tackling it uh, together with you and the rest of the team. Likewise, thank you. Thanks very much.